In this video, we're going to talk about this laser and I can guarantee you've never seen anything quite like this. All right, let's jump into it. So this is the Render Optic Diode Laser Engraver and Cutter, uh, and it is unlike anything I have ever seen. Now, quick caveat before we get rolling, this is a product feature, meaning Render is paying me to make this video. Um, so this is not going to be a product review. I try to keep those as unbiased as possible, but uh, there aren't a lot of people that have these machines currently because this just came out of the Kickstarter period. So I still wanna give you my thoughts, just know this isn't just a straight up review. This thing is just like wild, right? I've never seen anything like this. And honestly, when I first saw this machine, if you guys have kids, that this really reminds me of like a pack and play. Just the fact that like the mat or like where kids normally lay down is the case for the entire machine. And there's really four key areas in this video that I wanna focus on um, that make this very, very unique compared to other machines that you might have seen before. Now, before we get into those details, quick background on Render itself. This actually grew out of Virginia Tech, specifically with a few mechanical design students. This whole idea was prototype and built out while they were in school. They launched the Kickstarter in January of 2022. And if you want more background on that Kickstarter and design process, I've actually done a interview with one of their co-founders. You guys can check it out right there. Now, if you've done Kickstarters, you know that the Kickstarter fundraising process is kind of the easy part. Uh, once you get the money, then the real hard stuff happens when you actually figure out how to take your prototype design into something you can ship for people to use. So that manufacturing and fulfillment process took them all the way to April of 2024, so just like a month ago. And as of then, all of their pre-order units have been shipped out. And now they are going and launching this to the general public, hence why they're reaching out to some folks like me to make videos like this. Now I've had several conversations with their team, specifically Martin, um, one of the co-founders. They were really focusing on the idea that this is portable and something that you would pull out and set up. So you saw just then, how quick this is to tear down. Literally put this on a shelf and you can see it doesn't take up much room whatsoever. And then when you need to laser engrave or laser cut something, it doesn't take long. Uh, you just knock stuff over that I didn't have secure, uh, but it doesn't take long to actually set up and be ready to go in its full configuration. And then you have a couple ports here in the very front for power as well as software. And you can use pretty much anything that supports G-code commands, specifically Lightburn, which has basically become the industry standard in terms of units like this. So one of the really great use cases I see for this is if you are inside of a craft room and you're cutting out felt or cardstock and stuff like that, but obviously it still can engrave wood and then all of like the normal traditional stuff you've seen on this channel with other diode laser cutters and engravers. Now, because this grew out of a team here in the US, specifically Virginia Tech. One thing I love about this is it's fully designed, assembled, and especially the support is in the United States. Now there's four elements of this that really makes this unique. And the first one is the most obvious. This is like swinging origami transformer style design. It is just really cool. Specifically, this right here is pretty unique. It lets you get a large work area. This is about 18 by 12 inches, but you can actually remove this mat here at the bottom that we'll talk more about here in a second. And then you can just put this like directly on your material and engrave from there. And with the mat off, I wanted to highlight specifically this mechanism right here. You can see this pops up and then inside you have a mechanical as well as electronic connection. And there's actually magnets for this connection as well as a few studs. So everything is always perfectly oriented each time you go in. And on the side right here is actually a wheel um, that you can adjust the height to uh, with a screw right here. So you make sure it's always level depending on like what you have this set up with to allow it to run really smooth. Another nice part about this design is it's pretty clean, meaning you don't have the belts and the motors super exposed. Uh, you've got a little slot right here that you've got your belt running through. But if you need to tension that belt and get it a little tighter because they do stretch out over time, you've got the spots to do it on both ends. So I just love how compact and thought through this is. Even small things like when I am turning this right here, that wheel will actually pop under so that everything stays nice and tight. So when you go and drop the mat on it, everything can wrap up. So that was number one, the swinging cantilever design uh, is really, really cool. All right, number two is what I took off, the folding mat. Now the mat actually connects 
I'm gonna shut this so you can see it a little bit better with some magnets on the bottom. So right here, you can see you've got a series of magnets and those will line up with these guys right here. So that when you go and connect it, everything locks into place. So you have the perfect orientation between the cutting surface and the laser head itself. And the cutting mat is actually deeply engraved with a grid. And this grid will match exactly what you find inside of Lightburn. So since this isn't free, like sometimes you might find a honeycomb bed, this is gonna be loose from the machine itself with other machines. Since everything is locked together, you can place something directly on the grid and then know where it's gonna be once you go inside of the software. Now this does not have a camera integrated with it. Uh, and really you wouldn't be able to get a camera to cover this area unless you had something that was higher up just because the wide angle distortion gets kind of hard. And I have said this in other videos, I don't use the camera alignment a ton. Most of the time, if I'm gonna be using light berm, I'm gonna use the trace function, especially with a diode machine. And all that does is it will fire the laser at a really low power so it doesn't cut or engrave. And then it will go around whatever it's going to engrave. Either it can draw a box or it can actually trace the actual outline before it goes. And since you're using the laser itself, that's always gonna be the most exact. The grid takes it even a step further because you basically can have everything set up where you want it inside of the software, and drop your material where it needs to be on the grid, run the trace real quick, good to go. So I really don't see not having a camera to be a big like limiting factor to this machine. Now the grid itself is 18 by 12.2 inches, but like you saw a second ago, you can detach the mat and then you basically have an infinite workspace. That's one thing I love about diode machines specifically is usually you can just place them on top of whatever you're working with and they definitely carry that through with their design. And they've got some really examples of people engraving stuff that is really big. Now, this technically is a open gantry design. And I've kind of steered away from reviewing machines that are open gantry because we have a lot of really good options that are fully enclosed because filtration, when we have something that is out in the open is really hard. You're gonna have smoke and fumes and light and all that kind of stuff that's just gonna be up in the air. So if you are inside of a space like this, so like a craft room or in my case, like a 3D printing and like droid building room, you really can't use an open gantry machine. That was my my biggest hesitation when I first saw this on Kickstarter. And then I saw them talking about their filtration system and I was very surprised when I was testing this to see how well it worked. So the filtration system is going to be feature number three and they have done this really, really well. So if I take this off, which attaches by magnets and this will pop out and this is a consumable so you can replace a few of the filters that we'll talk about here in a second. But if you look down at it, you can see the fans for the filtration system and see how that locks in. And they are using a three stage process to do it. First is a pre-filter that just slots in right here. And this just helps take out the large particles and it's like fully washable and that just pops back in. And then from there you get into this unit. So second is going to be a HEPA filter that's going to take out the smaller particles. And then last is going to be a carbon filter that helps take out gases. Now everything about this design, the filtration was what I was most skeptical of uh, because even though it is mostly enclosed, like obviously you still have a gap here at the bottom and if you use the risers, which is an accessory kit that helps raise this up, if you're doing bigger material, um, that gap gets further and further. But you can see in my testing, it does a really, really good job of pulling in the smoke. And then the filter does a good job of getting rid of the particles and the smoke and all that kind of stuff. So in all of my testing inside of this room, I haven't had to have this filtered anywhere outside. This machine took care of everything with how they had it built in. And that was really, really surprising and definitely makes sense why you could use use this inside of a craft room because all that filtration is taking place. Now, with that being said, most of the stuff that I have been messing around with is wood, but when you get into plastics, especially like cask acrylic, and that stuff is pretty stinky to use. Um, even in like the fully enclosed machines, you're gonna be able to smell it. So just know if you're gonna be using material that will off gas, that's still going to happen. So it still would be good if you had some type of open ventilation, meaning like you could put this by a window, you could set a fan up, or they have an exhaust module as an accessory, which you could drop into a bigger filter, or you could drop that hose out window. And if you are familiar with a CNC router, this is kind of using that same design principle where you can't like fully enclose a CNC router, especially like a big woodworking router. Instead, you're going to have a dust boot that rides along with the router itself, so sucking up all of those chips and dust, and that's dropping into a filtration or like a vac unit. That basically is the exact same idea with this, but unlike the CNC router where you have to buy the vacuum and sometimes the filtration 
existing unit separately. All of that is built in directly inside of the render itself. So you're saving like a couple hundred to all the way over a thousand dollars if this was something you'd have to buy external. Now the other big reason I normally don't recommend open gantry style diode machines has to do with the fourth feature that you have done a good job with this and that is safety. Specifically safety to the laser beam itself. So it comes with like actual properly rated safety goggles. Now this is going to protect you from the light but another feature that will help protect uh, your environment from the light um, is this piece right here which can pop off. This is going to help filter out some of the light coming off of the diode and not only does this connect by a magnet um, but there's also a switch inside so this actually can't run unless this is attached. Now there still is going to be light leak and you can see that in the footage right now so I would always highly encourage anyone that is around this unit to be wearing some of these safety glasses um, but that helps limit a lot of that light. Now one thing that Martin the CEO definitely emphasized when I was chatting with them just how serious they were taking safety on this. This is fully compliant with all of the US laser standards, something you may not quite find with other machines, um, even though they might have stickers that say it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell if they're getting shipped directly from overseas. It also has a tilt sensor that's using a gyro that will cut power to the laser, and it's got a heat sensor. So if there's a flame up or a fire, it's going to cut the power to the sensor as well. But another thing that they do, this actually comes with a laser safety officer program, which is like an OSHA level training program. And they worked with Kintech Laser on that. So they have a few trained officers on their team themselves, but they give you the ability to train a member of your team or yourself if you're using the machine to make sure you fully understand how to be safe when you're using this machine. And that's something you definitely do not see with other diode machines. So they are very, very serious about safety. And then they have all of the support and everything around it to back everything up and again that is US based. Now I do want to show you the laser module itself. Um, it actually can just pop off and this is magnetically connected to this ribbon cable. This is a little bit more robust than some of the other ribbon cables I've seen like a specifically ones I see on Glowforge um, but this pops off. Now this is a 12 watt laser module and I really have found with dio machines specifically the like 10 to 20 watt it's kind of like a sweet spot for these machines. Obviously you can get ones that are more powerful. The only issue with that is as you step up higher and higher, you're also going to increase your beam size. So that could be good for cutting, but especially if you're going to be doing engraving, it's not as great. So while 12 watts may not be as high as what you see out there, a lot of times that extra wattage is more for marketing versus what you're actually going to use. And this has been a really good sweet spot for cutting and especially for engraving. And then for focus, they're giving you this handy height gauge that you can place underneath. And then also it has a few markings to be able to level this on the side as well. So this is like a multi-use tool. Now, one thing that the first diode units did not do a great job of because they didn't include it at all was any type of air assist. And this air assist is pretty unique. So it's not just like a compressor shooting a steady stream of air down through the laser module itself, because if they did that, that's gonna interrupt the suction they're using to pull in the filtration. When it's a fully enclosed unit, you don't have to worry about that as much because usually the suction is like on the back of the machine. So so those can be separate, but because they're basically in the same area and they did something that is really unique and that it is an air curtain. So they have a fan that is creating a stream of air or like a curtain of air that's helping to keep the path for the beam really clean. Um, so you're getting those really nice engraves and cuts, but you're also getting the safety features that you really need with an air assist. And because this isn't like a 60 watt laser diode, um, you're not going to have quite the concerns of like big flare ups that you would on something like a 12 watt. And another thing I found having kids in addition to a back and play is we go to Costco a lot and my kids love going to the cold place, meaning the huge like walk-in freezer they've got at those places. And as you walk in, you're hit by the stream of air because there's no doors. There's literally a curtain of air between the cold place, like my son likes to call it, and then everything else. And that's pretty much the same idea. You also find this like in big cities and hotels and stuff when you're walking in. It's a really cool way to integrate both an air assist and a filtration unit in basically the same airflow path area. So really the portability is one of my favorite aspects about this machine. It makes it super versatile because you can move it into a bunch of different situations. And to show you how fast you can get this set up and going, we're just going to engrave tests, which I've already done right there, again, on this piece of, I think it's balsa wood. But anyway, I'm going to put a timer up on the clock. I'm going to hit start. All right, I'm going to grab it off the shelf, set up, and to get going. I'm going a little slow because I don't want to knock this over. Flip this out. And drop it down. Good to go. And then it's got to power it up. 
And then I'm gonna jump into Lightburn, which is the software you more than likely will be using. It's already showing that it's connected. So I'm gonna home my machine. And then I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna drop my material on. And again, I can use the grid comes with it. So it makes it pretty easy to get everything lined up. Uh, I'm gonna move this a little bit inside of the software. Gonna hit frame, so get an idea of where this is actually going to go. Everything looks good, and we are going to go. This is already focused. I uh, already focused it um, on a different one, but it's really easy to focus as well. Now, as this powers up, you can definitely hear the fan. The fan is pretty loud. Let me make sure my glasses on. So it's not like a 3D printer where it's a little bit quieter um, or a laser that doesn't have a vacuum set up to it. Think of this, you're basically running a vacuum at the same time, so, so it's uh, pretty loud. It's gonna turn off and then it's gonna crank back up. Filter out anything that's left remaining from the engrave or cut and then cut off here in a sec. Once that's done, I can move this out of the way. And I really don't smell any dust or fumes uh, or smoke especially. So I did a good job. I'd already engraved on something that was there, but um, did an excellent job and actually used a library that was pre-built by the team. So you can just bring that directly into Lightburn. So you have all of your settings right there. And then to tear it down, let's do everything in reverse. And we are good Ugh. to go. All right, so we have a time of right at three minutes. Going from on the shelf to having something engraved out to going right back on the shelf really quick. Now, obviously your job will probably take longer than that. So those are the main features. And if you would do me a favor and let me know in the comments what you think about this form factor specifically and what other questions you might have about this unit. I know the team at Render will be very interested to see what you guys Think. And if you do want to pick this up, again, you can in the US and Canada. And for my audience and to celebrate the release of this machine in 2024, Render is giving the first 24 folks $1,000 off this unit. And there's a link in all the details down in the description. And until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.